Number one. Please note that I'm a female, and not a native English speaker. This is the second time where being multilingual has somehow saved my bacon. I recently drove from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to Buffalo, New York with my cat. The ride was long, but we were making decent time for the most part. She and I had gotten up to Ward right before you get into New York. It was around 5.30pm, but that also meant it was pitch blackout. We had only stopped once to get some McDonald's, and I drank their iced tea quickly to try and stay awake. I definitely had to pee. I didn't want to leave my cat in my car, so I put her leash on and walked into a gas station. The store wasn't empty. There were some dudes around browsing for honey buns, tasty cake, and cheaper cigarettes than in New York. There was a woman talking to counter guy up front. She was probably like a regular based on their seeming familiarity with each other. Do you mind if I use the restroom here? I said to the guy working there. The man behind the counter said sure, and my cat and I entered the bathroom. She sat on the counter while I did my thing. My cat jumped about a foot when we heard the doorknob rattle. I laughed and said, sorry, occupied right now. Now, my cat is a trained animal. She's trained to be around people, stimulating situations, crowds, and relatively loud noises. She absolutely hates cars, though. I looked over at her after the jump, and her tail was as full as could be. And she got low and climbed up to her favorite position on my shoulders. She dug into my hair with her nails and did a little grumble at me. The same thing she does when she wants to be led outside. The doorknob rattled again, and she swiped in the direction of the door, like a strike. It's still occupied, I called out, but I wasn't laughing this time. I then heard someone speak. It was a man's voice, and honestly, it kind of made my blood run cold. They were speaking a cousin of my native language. Should I grab her when she comes out? In my native tongue, grab doesn't have multiple connotations like in English. Let me grab them before they go, grab a bite to eat, grabbed by the hair, etc. No, they used what was similar to take. Another voice replied, No, the cashier's right there. We can go stand outside. I think her car's the blue one. My cat did her angry grumble sound, and I tried to pet her to reassure her. There weren't any windows in this bathroom, and my car was parked unwisely around the side of the lot. I parked it a little away from the lights, because I had a lot of stuff in it and I didn't want the items to be lit. It wasn't the blue car though, so that was one thing in my favour. I heard their steps retreat, and my cat and I sat there for what felt like forever. We both jumped when we heard a knock on the door. Come out quickly, and my girlfriend will lead you through the back to your car. They're standing out by the pumps. It was the counter guy, and who I thought was a regular. I opened the door, and she ushered me to the back. Not smart, but I didn't know what else to do. She opened the door, and I could see my car about 20 feet away. I wanted to sprint, but I remembered that I'd use my key fob to set the alarm. I unlocked the car with my keys, and the alarm went off. I still have deep cuts from my cat's panic. I threw myself into the driver's seat and locked the doors. I felt my heart in my throat as I threw the car into reverse and got the fuck out of there. On my way out, I noticed the guy standing by the blue car on the other side of the lot, trying to nonchalantly smoke. They didn't even know I got out. For anyone interested, here's a picture of my cat. A good judge of character. Number 2 I work at my local county animal shelter, done it for a few years. While you do see a lot of fucked up shit that would probably send you into a fit of rage, you also get to channel that rage into helping lots of awesome critters. 
It's pretty much what I was meant for. The block is set up like one winding stretch of county buildings. Basically, there's everything on this block from doctors to the homeless shelter. Needless to say, this block has some interesting characters. No biggie. I live in a pretty shit area, so crazy stuff happens all the time. Last year, right in front of me, someone jumped out of their car and stabbed another person in traffic. Didn't even make the news. Took the cops almost 30 minutes to get there. Back on track. My job lets me bring my dog to work, which is awesome. He just hangs out with me, or gets put into a doggy playgroup with his friends depending on my day's activity levels. He's super nice to everyone, but can be a little intimidating to some people at first. It's understandable. He's a 95 pound Doberman, and they get a bit of a bad rap. So a few days ago, I was up in the front office on my own, since my co-worker was on a break. Two guys come in. Right off the bat, I'm like, damn, these dudes are high as a kite. Well, whatever. Happens. We're located next to a large college. It's to be expected. Anyway, one of the dudes starts asking about volunteering, because he has some community service hours due for some law breaking he did, and I point him in the direction of the coordinator who deals with that. He goes, and the other guy stays and starts making idle conversation. What's my name? My birthday, favourite colour. He also compliments my tattoos, and asks if I got them all for my birthday. I don't know, this town's weird, so I don't question too much anymore. Then, out of nowhere, he starts telling me how hot I am, and asks for my last name. I had to give my first because it's engraved on my shirt, but I lied about my last name. I should have just told him I wasn't comfortable with giving my last name out. But of course, I have too nice syndrome, and honestly didn't want to be harassed further by saying no, which I have in the past. So the other guy comes back. They leave, and I take my break. Lo and behold, not ten minutes into my break, I get a text from my co-worker that the other guys came back looking for me, and not to come back into work. They apparently leave twenty minutes later. Phew, in the clear. So fast forward, day's pretty much done, just closing up shop. A different co-worker to the one I work up front with comes over and sees that I'm hurrying to leave. He asks me if I want him to take my dog out to a yard we have, let him do his business. I appreciate it and agree. My co-worker also says he'll put my dog in my car too, since it's parked next to his and he doesn't mind. He has the night shift to watch the animals, so he's got some time to chill. He's also my homie, and knows my routine. I say sure, since I have a few binders to take out anyway, and I hand him my keys. He goes off with my dog, and brings my keys back about 15 minutes later. Besides that guy, I'm the last to leave for the night. It's about 8, and already dark here, and the parking lot we have is so small that employees have to find street parking. That's a whole other level of shit. As I'm about halfway to my car, probably a five minute walk away, I can hear some low talking and footsteps coming behind me. It doesn't ring any alarm bells at first. Lots of buildings and stuff on this street, and some homeless people mill about later at night, but they're pretty harmless, so I just keep on trucking. Not that many steps later, I hear the steps behind me speed up, and feel a hand touch my shoulder. The hand stopped me so abruptly, I end up dropping my binders with loose papers I just organised. I turn and freeze when I see it's the two guys from earlier. Did you need something? I ask, as a sinking feeling set in. I just wanted to know why you lied to my brother here about your name. You like one of those stuck-up bitches who thinks they're too good? Asked the guy who wanted to volunteer. I stood there with my mouth like a fucking flytrap, no idea how he knew I lied. The other guy answered that for me. He told me he found me on Facebook from searching my work. I came up with the smoothest lie I could, and said that I'm not allowed to give my full name to customers for county law safety regulations. That's total bullshit, but they looked like they believed it. While I'm saying all of this, I see his hand resting on his pocket, 
and I subtly take in that they both have decent-sized pocket knives halfway concealed. I carry one myself for work, in case an animal ever gets caught on a leash or something, but I'm a 21-year-old girl. I'm 5'2 and 100 pounds. I'm not going to be able to do shit to these guys if it comes to it. I know that much. So now, I'm wanting to fucking cry, while the volunteer guy's going on about how it's good I'm not stuck up, because they don't like stuck up bitches, and think they should all be taught a lesson in mannerisms. I'm trying to think how to get the fuck out. No one's around, and I don't want to use my phone to call 911 in front of them. I'm almost to my car, so I don't want to risk going back to work. The guy who's got the hots for me is staring at me like a damn Christmas ham, so I want to puke. Then, they tell me about this party they're going to, and that I should come, since I'm a good girl, and good girls go to parties with them. The way Volunteer Guy said it, it made it like an order and not a request, and the hairs on the back of my neck went up. I get an idea while he's talking, and just pray to the Almighty it's going to fucking work. I force a relaxed smile and agree, saying I just have to put my binders in my car or my boss will kill me. They look stoked at my agreement and proceeded to follow me to my car. It's too dark to see inside the windows, and streetlights are a rare thing on this side of town. I get to the back door of my car, open it, and I smile when I see my dog's head pop up from the trunk out of his slumber. Before I even make a sound, his ears go back and he starts growling. I hear a, what the fuck is that, come from behind me, and that's all it took for my dog to get his ass up and lunge at them, doing his best to get his large body between me and the door. I grab his collar and let him jump out of the car. Let me tell you, he's going nuts. He's got drool flying out of his mouth, and he's snapping and barking and growling something scary. The guys back up, start telling me that we can't bring a dog to the party, and to put the fucking deranged mutt back in the car. I hold back from rolling my eyes and apologize, saying I'm just going to give him some dog food that I keep in my glove box. I shut the back door and open the front. My dog won't get in, just keeps growling and snapping at the two guys. So I keep a hold of his collar, and I get in the driver's side first, then call him in. Thankfully, he reluctantly follows. I shut it as soon as his ass is on the passenger seat, hit the locked doors button, and turn on my car. As soon as I do that, they know I'm not about to go to some party with their dumb asses, and start to bang on my window. My dog goes into rage mode, and hops in the back, and starts going ballistic, while I peel the fuck out of there, really not caring if I hit one of them or not. Once I'm down the street a bit, I see them in my rearview mirror, just staring at my car. I took the opposite direction in which I normally go home, just to make myself feel better, even though I have an hour commute home. As soon as I get back, I deactivate my Facebook. I told my boss the next day over the phone, and they're working on transferring me to one of our other two shelters in the county. So, if those two creepy drug guys are listening... I just want you to know that my dog goes everywhere with me, and I'm sure he'd love a second chance at you. For anyone interested in pictures of him, he's the one on the right of this picture. The other is a buddy of his. His name is Zeus, aka Zeus the Moose or Zeusy Moosey. Number 3 So this happened in early July, and it still creeps me out a bit today. I'm a soldier, and I live in the barracks on base, since I'm not married, and can't really afford my own place. For security reasons, I won't name the base or its location. It's typically pretty quiet around here, aside from the common parties that happen on the weekends, so this event was pretty surprising to me. Additionally, I work the night shift four days a week from two to midnight, so it's even quieter on most days when I return to my room. This night, however, was on 4th of July weekend. 
military gets a four-day weekend on federal holidays, so the common area was a bit louder on Thursday night, my last workday for the week. To give you a better idea about the layout, the barracks are separated into four three-story buildings that all share a large concrete common area. Since we obviously can't smoke in our rooms, the common areas have two smoking zones on either side. We call them the smoke pits. The pits each consist of a picnic table, a grill, and a large trash bin, covered by an awning to block out the rain. The pits are the site of most of the parties that occur on the weekends, mainly the one furthest from my building. I'd gotten out of work early, so it was about ten when I got back to the barracks and made my way to my room. As per usual on nights that don't have workdays following them, there was a party at the pit furthest from my building where most of the people outside were at. However, there was one person at my building's pit. Originally, I assumed he was just out there for a smoke and wasn't up for partying. What was strange, however, was that he didn't have a cigarette. He had no vape and wasn't on his phone. He just sat there dressed in blue jeans and a red hoodie with his hood up. It was the middle of July in the south, so this was a bit strange, but the rooms are pretty much perpetually cold during the summer. We don't control the AC, and the barracks NCOs just blast that shit on high. It's at like 65 degrees for the entire summer for whatever reason, so I figure he might just have stepped out to warm up. He sat on the table with his arms in his front pocket and his head hanging. Wanting to smoke, I stood at the opposite side of the table and lit a cigarette. The guy didn't speak, or even move for the entire time I was there. He just sat there, blankly staring into his lap. I didn't think much of it, and just made my way back to my room. I changed and patrolled YouTube for a while. It's important to note a few things here. Each room houses two soldiers, and the doors automatically lock when closed. The only people with the key are the unit headquarters, and of course the room's residents themselves. In the event that a resident loses their key, they have to call to get someone to unlock it every time they need to get into their room. That is, until the key is replaced. Additionally, my room is located on the second floor of the building, and is a bit tucked away around the back. So, unlike the rest of the building, there's next to no traffic outside of my room. My side of the room also has the only window, and is right where the door is, so I can hear when someone rarely passes my room. My roommate worked an odd shift from 8pm to 4am, and I wasn't too sure what days he worked. Finally, the room is very dark, and I can't see if my roommate is asleep in the room when I enter so I close the door quietly by keeping the knob turned as it closes. He wasn't home at this time. At around 2am, I hunkered down to get some sleep. Before I dozed off, however, I could hear a shuffling outside. I peeked out of the window and could see some obviously inebriated girl tripping over herself to get to her room. I knew the girl lived in the room next to mine, so I didn't see a need to help her since she was literally right there. But I listened for a while until I heard her enter her room. About ten minutes later, I heard someone walking towards my door, and then stop. I figured it was my roommate getting home, but I couldn't hear the obvious sound of someone unlocking the door. For a long moment, it was silent. Then, I heard the sound of my door slowly opening. Instantly, I sat up and looked at the foot of my bed where the door was. There was no sound of the doorknob turning, and no click of the lock. The door was just slowly being pushed open, as if someone was trying to enter very quietly, which wasn't like my roommate. Once the door was fully open, someone not in uniform walked in. At first, I didn't recognize who it was, until I noticed the red hoodie. I gasped and screamed, get the fuck out! The man jumped and darted out of the room. I jumped out of bed and ran to the door, but by the time I made it, the guy had jumped over the rail and onto the bushes below, and was running across the common area. 
Immediately, I called the MPs, and they arrived within minutes. A few of them did a search of the area, while the rest made trips around the rooms to check on everyone. The girls' room next to mine was also not closed. They eventually found the guy in a storage room of one of the other barracks buildings. It was a few weeks before I found out the whole story. Apparently, the guy wasn't even a soldier, but was an ex of the girl who lived next to me. Prior to that night, the ex didn't know what room she lived in, and had attempted to follow her to her room after she was finished partying. He knew she didn't have a roommate at the time, so he figured he'd be able to prey on her without anyone noticing. I don't know how the guy got onto base, since there's always an ID check at the gate, and the guy didn't have identification on him. Fortunately for the girl, in my attempt to be quiet, I'd accidentally not closed my door completely, and the guy mistook my room for hers. What's worse is that the girl hadn't closed her door all the way either, so had the guy not mixed up the rooms, he'd have broken into hers while she was extremely drunk and likely unconscious. While I'm fortunate that the girl was safe, I fear for what might have happened if I'd been asleep when that creep was in my room. Typically, the barracks are supposed to be a safe place for troops to sleep, and things of this nature don't usually happen. But this goes to show that you need to be careful, no matter where you are. Number 4 This happened just last night, and honestly, I'm a little shaken up over it. I'll try to retell the tale exactly as it happened, but my fear is sure to have fudged my memory of it. I work evenings as a dispatcher in a medium-sized Midwestern city. I was driving home at 2am when I stopped for gas. In retrospect, it was stupid to have stopped at all. The gas station was poorly lit, and completely empty of other customers, but I knew the shady areas of town, and this wasn't usually one of them. As I was pumping gas, I noticed a middle-aged black woman sitting on the curb across the parking lot. It was a cold night, and it just started raining. The woman wasn't wearing weather-appropriate clothing, so she was drenched. When the woman saw that I was watching her, she called out to me from across the lot. My second of many stupid decisions that night was choosing to engage with her. I was worried for her, so I approached her to see what kind of help I could offer. Hi beautiful, I'm just trying to get home, but no one will help me, she said. I'm trying to get to City A, but the cab ride is 60 bucks and I only have 40. Can you help me? I don't usually give money to panhandlers, but this woman seemed genuine. The weather was terrible, and my job centers around helping people, so I agreed. I had told her I didn't have any cash on me, but if she would come with me inside, I'd take some money out of the ATM and give her a few bucks. Inside, the ATM wasn't working. I apologized and told her there was nothing else I could do for her. She followed me back outside, idly chatting with me as I opened my driver's side door to get in. And then, she got in the car. I was too shocked to really say anything. I sat, staring at her as she buckled herself into my passenger seat. As soon as she got into my car, her demeanor changed entirely. She no longer seemed forlorn, as much as she did, extremely excited, restless. Just take me to my aunt's house, she said. She can give me money. Of course, alarm bells start going off in my head. Although my first instinct is to tell her to get the fuck out of my car, my gut tells me that that would be dangerous. She had already proved to be unpredictable. She seemed to be high, and I didn't know if she had a weapon on her. Forcing her out of my vehicle, I thought, had the potential to elicit a violent reaction. Where are you asking me to take you? I finally said. Just start driving, and I'll tell you where to turn. No. If you want me to consider driving you somewhere, I need you to tell me where we're going. I say this with no real intention of driving her anywhere. Don't worry, honey. I'm not one of those bad blacks. I'm not gonna rob you or nothing. 
Just drive. No, I repeated. What's your aunt's address? Okay, it's on Street A. What's the house number? As I was asking her questions, she got really agitated. We still hadn't left the gas station parking lot. I considered getting out of my car and going into the gas station for help, but A, she seemed to know and be friendly with one of the attendants inside, and B, I wasn't about to leave her alone in my car. Finally, she snapped at me and said, Why are you asking so many questions? I thought we were friends. You don't trust me? Is it because I'm black? I work at a police department, I said. It's my job to ask these sort of questions. She flipped the fuck out, started yelling at me about being a snitch, about trying to get her into trouble, just in general losing her damn mind. At this point, I'm more scared than ever. I just wanted her gone, but my instinct still told me asking her to get out of the car wouldn't work. So, I decided to take a risk. I'm not a police officer. I just work at a police department. Why don't I drive you to Walmart and see if they have an ATM there that works? My idea was to get her out of my car as peacefully as possible and then lose her in the store. She liked my idea and immediately calmed down. I knew that driving off with this woman in my car was incredibly, incredibly risky, but it seemed like my best option at the time. As we're driving, she keeps talking to me. Her thoughts were erratic, bouncing all over the place. It sometimes seemed difficult for her to follow through with one thought, but this is roughly how our conversation went. I'm glad we're friends now. I have about five or six people trying to get me. I'm going to come over to your work tomorrow so we can go and arrest them together. Okay, we can talk about that tomorrow. Tonight you said you're trying to get home. Yeah, honey. I'm trying to get to City B. City B? I thought you said you wanted to go to City A. Yeah, yeah. City A. That's what I meant. That's why the cab ride is $40. It's far away. The cab ride is $40? You said you have $40. I do, baby. I have $40, but the cab ride is 60 Silence. Are you sure you can't take me to my aunt's house? She lives close by on Street B. I thought you said she lived on Street A. No, baby, I meant Street B. But it don't matter, because she won't give me money anyway. You sure you can't just take me to City A? It was terrifyingly obvious that this woman was utterly full of shit, because the details of her story were constantly changing. When we pulled into the Walmart parking lot, she finally got out of my car, but only after I got out first. She then followed me into the store. I told her before we went to find the ATM that I needed to use the restroom. My plan was to call the police from inside the stall, but she followed me into the bathroom too. And that's when things got really weird. She grabbed me by the crook of my arm and whispered in my ear, If you don't got no money, that's okay. But let me ask you something, sweetie. Do you like getting your pussy ate? I told her no as forcefully as I could manage, bolted into a stall, and locked the door as fast as I possibly could manage. As soon as I had a barrier between us, I said, You know, I have some friends at the police department that can probably help you better than I can. I'm just going to give them a call and we can figure this out together. Again, at the mention of the cops, she started screaming at me. I just kept reiterating that the police would help her. She snapped at me that she was going to leave and stormed out of the bathroom, but it wasn't over. I waited to make sure she was really gone. Sure enough, not 60 seconds after she left, she came back into the bathroom and started banging on the stall door. Then she said something that scared me more than anything else. Hey, come back to your car with me. I left my beer in your car. I blatantly tell her that no, I saw her get into my car and that she had absolutely nothing with her, only the clothes on her back. After that, she left the bathroom again and didn't come back. I waited a good five minutes before exiting the bathroom. I immediately found a manager who called the police for me. 
Thankfully, I was in a different police jurisdiction from the one I work in, because I would have been mortified at how entirely stupid I had been the whole night, and would have died of embarrassment if any of my co-workers responded. The officer that did respond took my statement, and advised me to be more careful in the future. He said that sometimes panhandlers turn violent, and that just recently, there had been a report of a woman who matched her description, who assaulted a good Samaritan that had stopped to try and help her. I definitely learned a lesson on stranger danger, and I'm lucky to have come out unscathed. I'm glad my stupidity didn't kill me. So guys, the next time you try and help a stranger late at night, don't. Hey guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. Sorry that I haven't been posting much lately. I actually have an interview coming up which I've been preparing for, so I've been trying to focus on that, as much as possible at least. Once that's over, I'll try to get more content out as quickly as possible. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to do some naughty things with that like button. Until the next video guys, you all stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark.